Yeah, we got Greg on the line, who is the president and CEO of the at the acronym ANSAR901. Greg, how you doing today? I'm doing all right. How you doing, brother? All right. What does ANSAR901 mean? All right. ANSAR901 is actually an acronym that Action Network striving against recidivism. And um, recidivism is a term that they use for when uh, criminals, when they're like ex-criminals, when they're released back into society, and they reoffend, like they commit another crime. Okay, so where are you located at? I'm located in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. Wow, interesting. Well, give us a give us a brief uh, history of yourself, Greg. All right. Well, I'm born and raised in Vauxhall, New Jersey. Okay. You know I, mean? um, I had moved from out of uh, New Jersey back in 2011. I went from there to Georgia, and from Georgia, I moved on over here to Tennessee. I've been in uh, Memphis for the past four years now. So you, so you, uh, myself, so yeah. this, so, so this uh, action network against recidivism is a is a is a pet peeve of yours. Something you decided to start. Well, actually, you know, myself as well as a few other of uh, the members of Anthro Nine Hundred One have been previously incarcerated citizens, or we like to call it down here. And, you know, what happened was we, we got home, you know, and we've lived our lives, and, you know, by the permission, you know, of a lot that we able to have been home and stayed out of trouble for some time. And when we realized that, you know, when it comes to recidivism, which is the term for, you know, the tendency of convicted criminals to reoffend. So when we noticed that the reason, the root of it, a lot of the reoffending comes from people not having a support system, not having like a support system with family, not having uh, the education that they might need, or, you know, the job capabilities, you know what I mean, not having the skills that they need to be able to go out and attain gainful employment. So, well, ANSAR does, you know, we try to greet people when they come home, we try to make a reentry program available for them. So what we have established here in Memphis, Tennessee, is a life skills program with the uh, Tennessee Department of Corrections, where uh, we have a volunteer group that are going into the prisons, and we're going in starting the um, life skills program. So what we want to do is reach people while they're in there, while they have time to think, and introduce them to life skills that they're going to need when they come home, and also when they come home, we have, um, we have counseling, we have a one-on-one -on -one counseling, we have actual a licensed social worker, we have a peer group counseling that we're setting up, we have resume building, and we also have life skills for when they're home. So you, and the network all, yeah, okay. So you guys, excuse me, but are you, so you guys are actually working hand-in-hand -hand with Tennessee Department of Corrections? Yes. Yes, the reason why is because we figured that to try to solve the problem, I mean, because really the Department of Corrections is there to house inmates. You know what I mean? So they're like, they're there for the punishment, like the time out. But as far as trying to get people to be better while they're there, they don't really have all of the capabilities that they do. And for some of our members, that being that we had experience from the inside and then the actual transitional, we, we know we can tell people what they need to know before they come out. We can also tell people what to expect. You know what I mean? To give people the real-life perspective of when you first get home, I know everybody thinks it's going to be a big party and then life is just going to fall in line. But we try to give people the realistic approach that, you know, you really, of course, everybody's going to be happy to get out. But, you know, with time, you know what I mean? All of those same trials and tests that were there before you got incarcerated is going to be waiting for you. But it's going to be in a different form because time has moved on. Okay. You know what I mean? So we try to give people a realistic approach. That's why we start off with the life skills. So we can establish uh, a relationship with the people that are on their way out. Because down here in Tennessee, they have a thing called the, um, the Take One Initiative. And there are, there are other initiatives as well that they try to sponsor uh, inmates when they're coming home with, you know, um, COVID vouchers, transportation. And they, um, if they have nonprofit organizations that are willing to mentor these people, they'll assign you, you know, an inmate.
behind me or more. And when they come to us, we'll have already established uh, contact with them from the life skills class. So you can kind of see where their head is at or try to get them on the right track. And then when they get to the halfway house, they'll be getting in touch with us and we'll be monitoring their progress as well as trying to help them with uh, any type of resources that we have available that are uh, available for the state. And we also are in the process of trying to establish our own halfway house as well. Okay. I noticed that a lot of the reentry programs, some of them understand that just getting a basic ID for a person entering back to society is kind of hard. Are you guys yeah. trying to help, like, get guys get ID, uh, trying to get them to understand how to fill out an application and so forth and so on? Definitely. Definitely. Like, here, down here in Tennessee, though, before they leave, they're allowed, they have uh, something set up on the inside of the Department of Corrections to help them get their birth certificate, get their license, and to get their, uh, their social security card. But they have to pay for it. So that'll come out of your state pay and things like that. But they do have that resource available down here. Okay. Are you guys connected with any other companies that's willing to hire uh, ex felons or ex ex people ex criminals? I don't know the the uh, politically correct word to say when somebody's been incarcerated. So yeah, now, down here, down here, one of the, uh, the old one of our vice uh, president, he kind of coined the term of uh, previously incarcerated citizens. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You know, because they say, you know, being a, you know, because uh, brothers that have done a lot of time, you know, they want they, you know, they want to still feel, you know, connected, you know, to being a citizen at the same time. But down here, yeah, they do have, uh, we have a, a real extensive list of felony friendly employers. You know, I mean, you have some big names like Black and Decker, AT and T, you know, Aramark. You know, what I mean, uh, uh, a lot of the uh, restaurants, you know, they they hire uh, ex felons as well. So, you know, myself as well as my secretary and uh, the vice president, we go to different establishments and uh, we introduce ourselves and let them know that, you know, we have, you know, previously incarcerated citizens that will be looking for employment. And um, surprisingly, you know, I mean, it's a lot of employment that's available, not just seasonal, like right now, of course, you have seasonal work, but they also have other work throughout the year, you know, with factories and things like that. We try to establish a good relationship like, like that. And also, you know, we try to find out about the uh, bond, getting somebody bonded. Yes. You know, being federally bonded. I, I've heard of that in the past when I was in Jersey. That, you know, when someone has uh, just returning back to society, uh, kind of an incentive for employees to hire you is to get federally bonded. That way, in case if anything happens, you know, they'll, they'll be uh, on the safe side, you know, for taking a gamble, as, as they would say, with uh, hiring somebody that just came home. That's great. So you guys are located in Memphis, Tennessee. So, how can we get in touch with you guys? Got Twitter, you guys on Facebook. What's the uh, yeah, I'm kind of old, kind of old school. We got the Facebook, we uh, we all answer our message on uh, Facebook. We have uh, a website, and then we have uh, our Facebook under construction at the moment, but we do have our email, it's answer a n s a r dot message at gmail.com. And our phone number is 901-267-HELP, H-E-L-P, that's 4357, 901-267-4357. And then uh, for those that are previously incarcerated citizens right now that you may know of, that may need some type of services or they're trying to look for some resources in their areas, you know, we have a P.O. Box that, um, you know, we can share as P.O. Box. One 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 five nine five Memphis Tennessee three eight one one one. You can address it to Anstar nine zero one. And we definitely uh, making ourselves readily available. We're uh, a faith based nonprofit organization, and we're here, you know, to provide moral support for people, as well as you know, religious support and um, economic support. You know, with the resources. You know what I mean? We're trying to, you know, help people as far as get to the resources that they need when they first re-enter in society. Because the first six months, you know, statistically is the, the hardest part. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I can definitely speak from an example with that because, you know, automatically when you have to go back, if you don't have a resume, that's another thing. We have a resume building class. Even though, you know what I mean, maybe some people have spent, you know, like a lot of years incarcerated, you still can have a resume of things that you've been doing while you were there. Okay. Uh, 
you know, while, while being incarcerated, you do have jobs that you do. Like, you know, I mean, I remember in, uh, in Jersey, they had the, the bakery, they had the farms, stuff like that. So, you know, the type of work that you do, you still can list it. And then, you know, explain it to you know, the, the employer that you're seeking, you know, employment from. Let them know ahead of time, you know, that you do have a record. I learned that also firsthand is that, you know, you don't want to leave that out. When you leave it out, it's considered lying by omission. You know, and if you do put it, you know, I mean, you're better off to be honest right up front. And then, you know, some places will still hire people. That's one of the issues that a lot of guys have when they first come home. They feel like they can't tell anybody or they try to work around it. And it's better to just be up front. Okay, so you so... Are you guys just just helping guys right now in, in, in that's coming home from the Tennessee Department of Corrections, the federal, or like anybody that's within your range that you guys can help? Yeah, anybody that's really in our range right now, we, we work with the Tennessee Department of Corrections as far as the life skills course, and uh, you know those that are just coming home, as well as in uh, several halfway houses that are here in Tennessee, in the Memphis area. We kind of work because we have the yeah, federal, it's a federal prison that is down here that's right next to the uh, Tennessee Department of Corrections where we go. So we're going to try to uh, establish contact with them. But they have different guidelines and rules and things like that. So that's still in the process. So at the moment, it's just the Tennessee Department of Corrections. Okay, Greg, we look forward to talking to you, man. I'm, you know, proud of you, and man. I'm glad. Let me, let, me mention, let me mention the life skills course that we have. You know what I mean? It covers a lot of different things. Like, you know, people, we talk about values, people's beliefs, their goals, their needs, wants and desires, you know, try to identify that for people. You know what I mean? Because, like, it's a mindset that you have to get out of. Like, I've seen in the movie uh, where uh, they said the old saying, you know, free your mind and, you know, the rest will follow. I'm just, you know, power phrasing it, but, you know, you know the real saying. But, yeah. you know, if you, free, if you free your mind, you know, you can think like an upright citizen before you even get out because if you don't, you know what I mean, you could be institutionalized and not really realize it. And then when you when you come home, you know, you, you're going to be like, you know, the odds are. We got that. We got the expectations, you know, as far as what parole might expect, you know, money management, you know, getting their IDs. And then I have a, a specific segment that I wanted to mention about was what I consider uh, doing the math, right? Mm-hmm. Well, all right, so like... Um, for example, I use these two different games. There's a Japanese board game that's called a Go, and there's another game that's like an African board game. I forget yeah, how you say it. But, you know what I mean, people wouldn't gamble their lives on games that they don't know. You know what I mean? Like, because you wouldn't know the rules or how to play it. So, you know, what I did was just try to make it visual for people that, you know, with the rules and regulations as far as with the, uh, the laws, you know what I mean? Because, like, you know, when somebody comes home and they get desperate, like, they don't have any money, you may say, all right, well, look, man, you know, I'm going to hustle a little bit. Or, you know, if you were into robbing, you know, you know I'm going to do one or two things and I'm going to get some money and that's it. But if you sat down and really thought about it like this, like, I, what I did, I started doing the math. So I said, what's your life worth? So I did 365 days in a year, right? Yeah. You were going to you were going to make a sale. You say, okay, let's say I'm gonna make two thousand dollars just to make it a grandiose sale. Being you know, in reality, it's not really like that all the time. But you know, just for beat down sake, shall I say, for the you know for the course, you were going to make two thousand dollars in this transaction. I mean, you get busted though, so you were putting it on the line for two thousand dollars because it's not like a lot of money when you don't have nothing. Two thousand or something. So if you get caught in here in Tennessee, then you got a lot of um sentence you between two years to seven years for certain crimes. So two years, you break it down, that's 730 days. So you divide 2,000 by 730, you would only got $2.74 a day. Mm. So, if you got, so if you got five years for that $2,000 sale, that's 1,825 days divided by, you know, 20, 2,000 divided by 1,825, that's $1.09 a day. So if you look at it like that, as far as the math, you'll be like, nah, I can borrow a dollar or two, you know what I mean, from yeah. the loved ones or something and just chill out. But when you're in a desperate situation and you never looked at it like that as far as the math, what it would be, you're not going to weigh it out properly, so you're not playing the game right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the kind of analogy that I'm bringing when it comes to with the life skills course that we're trying to offer. We want people to look at it like in living color, like a real life 
you know, different situations and scenarios. But that's one of the, the main ones because I know desperate times come. You know what I mean? Like, one of my favorite movies was um, Pursuit of Happiness with Will Smith. Yeah. You know, and he wasn't, he wasn't ex con. He was an upright guy. You know what I mean? With, the, with his business, and then all of a sudden it just it flopped. And then life just hit him, like, you know what I mean? Like a ton of bricks. You know, you got your son with you, and you're real desperate. You know what I mean? You're running out of options, your car gets towed. You know, life could be tricky like that. Yes, sir. So, you know, when I, when I was first watching the movie, I had just KO not too long after that, before that. So, I'm thinking, you know, I was still thinking, stinking big. I'm like, man, you better do something, man, because you're getting big. But he kind of ruled it out, like, in a way that, like, I didn't expect the, the movie to go. And then ended up, he ended up being prosperous at the end. But he had to go through a lot. Yeah. So, what we, we, we were trying to do is get guys ready in their mind and say, look, even if life hits you like that, like, if it gets real bad, you got to think of all the things. Hold on, hold on, I'm, I'm going to tell people to make a small list. On one side, it's going to be dislikes, you right? All the things you dislike about being in prison. Because I don't really have to preach to anybody that's incarcerated because they know because they're there. You know what I mean? So they can write all the things they dislike and then on the other side of the list they're going to write the things that they like. And not many people are going to have a lot of likes <laughs> about being incarcerated. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. Just speaking from, from real, real life. So when, they, when you think of that, it's like, that, that's what you got to put on the line when you get in those desperate times. And I'm not, I ain't trying to, I mean, I ain't going to be soapboxing nobody like it's going to be all peaches and cream. But the thing is, when you weigh it out properly, before you get into some stuff, then you'll say, you know what, man, I'd rather just go through this hard time right now and, you know, be at the shelter or, you know what I mean, have to go through whatever agency I can go through to try to get myself together. And then once it comes through, it comes through. But the fast money is going to be there calling you. You know what I mean? And, um, different relationships that you might not need to be in are going to come, you know, tests are going to be there. What we're trying to do is get guys ready or, you know, shift it. If you have a women's facility as well, we're trying to get the men and women ready to think of, you know, past the party stage. Because that's like, you know how it is, you know, that's short sure you know, Everybody's yeah. happy to see you, you know what I mean, you know. But then, like but, the, but, but then, but then, but then, at the end of the day, somebody wants you to produce. Whether you're gonna have to pay a bill, <laughs> you gotta exactly. get up, you gotta get up off that couch. Something got yeah, to happen. Yeah, because it's all good at first, and it's like you know, everybody looks forward to all that. The, all the little, like, all you know, the little slick comments start yeah. coming and talking about, damn, you, who ate all the food and. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Damn, then, then your pride gets in the way. Like, you know what, nah, I'm, I'm going to bounce back. You know, like, like I never left. It's like, it never really works yeah. like that. It never really works like that. So we want to get guys with their mind, you know, set on trying to, you know, getting ready to grind. Like, you know, you might come out and get blessed with a good job and hold it down. But if you don't right away, you know, that first six months can be tricky. And we also got a segment in there about, you know, with your parole officer, you know, having a third relationship. You know, whether they're real stern or not, you want to have a good communication with them. Exactly, exactly. You know what I mean? Because sometimes people think, like, well, I'm going to just get around it. You know, they don't be calling me like that. And it could be that one or two or three times next thing you know you're back in the joint. So we want to get people established to having to report to somebody. Because, you know, I know once you get that smell of freedom, you feel like, okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm completely free. A couple people that's on parole, there's a lot of stipulations that go with it. So you got to have people's mindset on, look, I'm going to be 100% transparent. And when you're 100% transparent, a lot of the times, you know, you, you check yourself and say, you know what, man, I don't want to tell them that I'm doing X, Y, Z, so I'm just going to not do it. Yeah. And, and man, that, that comes from cutting ties with some people that you might have to cut ties with, as well as being okay with being your own best friend. Because many times, you think about all the stories you've heard over the years, you say, man, I wish I'd have never even went that day. I wish I would have just stayed home. You know what I mean? I could have watched the game at home. I had to go out to the center stretch and make sure something happened. Yeah, ro- wrong places, wrong places, the wrong time could get you a life bed. Man, it happens too often, man. And then it's like, then when you sit there looking in the blurry mirror, you got a whole life full of regret. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, but before that happens, that's why when we deal with um, the, the transitional uh, facility that we're dealing with. Yeah, a lot of people that are like, you know, more, more considered a shorter term. Yeah. They're about to come home with like within a year or two. So we want to deal with them because that's the ones that are getting ready to come. You know what I mean? We, we also establish contact with uh, other inmates that have more time. 
know what I mean? Because they got to get themselves together too, but they, you know, it's a process. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we want, we want to try to establish that for the, the you know, incarcerated citizens that's on their way. So they can start thinking like free citizens and think like, well, you know, if I can sit in there and think, you know, man, if this and this go wrong, or my plan A, my plan B, what does that go wrong? I hate when people say that, you know, what's your plan B? I'm like, man, no, my plan A is solid. Like, you know, but life, life is real, man. You know, sometimes A and B don't work. Yeah. You yeah. gotta see how to play and see. Yeah, because time, time, you know def- I mean? time definitely moves on. Nobody waits for nobody to come home. Nobody, man. man. And it's like we can have a million excuses why we could do some dirt. Like some people, you know, they say, you know, they gotta do for their kids, this and that, but they're still gonna be there when you go. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, that's the part of, of being able to evaluate yourself as well as being okay with being your own best friend. In some instances, you know yeah. what I mean? Or, or have some good acquaintances that's going to always tell you good, that's going to go against that little stinky thing that you may have. And, uh, man, don't do it. You got your life to worry about. Do the right thing. Them kind of people you want to surround yourself with. Because, you know, unfortunately, it, it, it seems to be more people that would be the other way around. Like, you know, all right, we can do X, Y, Z, and then next thing you know, y'all on the catwalk together. Like, man. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. And everybody that has been incarcerated before knows that when you leave it, you see a bus coming. Mm. Unfortunately. So it's like the system don't stop. So when we realize that it's a system, and you know, you got all the stats and all that to prove it. So what we want to do is try to get people's minds thinking right. And that's also a form of, you know, crime prevention. Because... Most of the time, the people that are comfortable doing crime is people that have done crime before. You know what I mean? Okay. So, like, you know, most people don't just wake up and say, all right, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be, you know, a robber today out of nowhere. I'm going I'm to sell drugs today out of nowhere. You had to have a taste of it or done it before. But when you get that taste out of people's mouth, or at least the thought that's going to come in the back of their mind, you want their conscience to be a little bit louder the next time around. Yes. They can say, nah, you know what? Nah, I'm going just, to just chill. And there have been times when you're like, you know, everybody gets tested that has been in the system. When you first come home, after you've been home for a while, you know, you could be and just moved out and got in see a new place, and the next thing you know, you get fired. I remember coming into a job with um, the hospital band on. I just had, why you had the baby? I'm coming in with the hospital band on, you know, and a couple minutes later, he's fired. Like, you know what I mean? Which, which, you know? Listen, listen, yeah, Greg. Huh? Well, listen, we uh, we we enjoyed you to take your time out of your day to spend with us, man. And we look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate you having me on, baby. No problem, brother.